time for the reading nest. Come on. Welcome to the reading nest. Where books inspire you to be your best. Come on and pull up a seat now. We've got adventures to explore. Grab a book and dive right in. Okay, find your listening ears. Hey everyone, and welcome to The Reading Nest. I'm Patrick, and I'm so excited that you joined me today. Today's story from The Nest is called Sing a Song, How Lift Every Voice and Sing inspired generations. I chose this story because of the time in life that we're going through at this moment. We have a new president-elect, we have a new vice president-elect, and there's so much happening in the world right now that we just need inspiration to bring us joy and know that everything is going to be all right. So before we start reading our story, let's learn about the person who wrote it when it was set to music, and how it inspired generations to come and became our national black anthem. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. See you soon. James Weldon Johnson was an early civil rights activist, writer, politician, educator, lawyer, and a leader of the NAACP. He was also a leading figure in the creation and development of the Harlem Renaissance. Johnson graduated from Atlanta College, which is now known as Clark Atlanta University, and became a principal in a grammar school in Jacksonville, Florida. His brother John Rosamond Johnson was a composer, conductor, and actor. He composed and performed in stage plays, musicals, and operettas. He returned to Jacksonville and served as the musical director at the Bethel Baptist Church. In 1900, James Weldon Johnson wrote Lift Every Voice and Sang, and his brother John set it to music. The song was first sang and performed in the Johnson's hometown of Jacksonville, Florida, as a celebration of Lincoln's birthday. And it was sung by a choir of 500 school children, where James Weldon Johnson was principal. In the early 1900s, Lift Every Voice and Sing was dubbed by the NAACP as the Black National Anthem. This song for more than a century has held a powerful place in African-American history. The song is a history lesson, a rallying cry, a pledge of unity, and as a people gather to fight for equality and justice. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now let's read, Sing a Song, How Lift Every Voice and Sing Inspired Generations, written by Kelly Starling Lyons and illustrated by Keith Mallet. Before you were born, a girl learned a song. Her principal, James Weldon Johnson, and his brother, John Rosamond Johnson, had written the hymn for a celebration of President Abraham Lincoln's birthday. The girl wanted to make them proud. She hummed the song on her way home from school. She practiced it as she did her chores. On the big day, February 12, 1900, she was part of a choir, 500 strong, back straight, Head high, heart and mouth open, she sang. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. And she kept on singing as she grew up. She taught it to her students when she became a teacher. She crooned it to her husband as they journeyed from Jacksonville, Florida to a new life in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She sang it as she rocked her baby boy to sleep. It was a part of her she wanted to pass on. And you know what? Her little boy learned that song. 
He listened to her hum it as she dreamed of being able to teach again in her new home. He heard his daddy sing it when the days at the steel mill wore him down. Then one day, he stood in the choir loft and gazed at the glowing faces. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, he sang. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. And he kept on singing. He sang it when he came back from World War II and faced discrimination. He sang it when he joined the NAACP. He sang it with his wife and to his baby daughter as he rocked her to sleep. It was a part of him he wanted to pass on. And you know what? His little girl learned that song. She sang it each morning at school. Then came the day that broke the nation's heart. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. The next morning, she saw her teacher cry. Sobs replaced singing, then whimpers in silence. Who would lead them now? The song whispered an answer. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, she sang. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. And she kept on singing. She sang it at protests for equal rights and when she and her friends were jailed. She sang that song in her heart each time she won or lost a case as a lawyer. She sang it to her baby boy as she rocked him to sleep. It was a part of her she wanted to pass on. And you know what? Her little boy learned that song. Every family reunion opened with that anthem. He sang because he had to at first. But then something changed. He saw the awe in his grandparents' faces, saw the pride in his mamas and pops. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, he sang, sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. And he kept on singing. He sang it at his college graduation and when he opened his first business, he sang it at rallies to stand up against racism. He sang it holding his wife's hand at black history programs and he rocked his daughter to sleep. It was a part of him he wanted to pass on. And you know what? His little girl learned that song. And on another big day, September 24th, 2016, she stood in a crowd of thousands along with her mama and daddy. President Obama, the First Lady and generations of one family rang the Freedom Bell, a dream born a century ago. To honor Black lives and contributions had finally come true. The National Museum of African American History and Culture was officially open. With the Washington Monument piercing the sky, that little girl stared at the bronze building majestic as a crown. As bells around the nation tolled in triumph, she heard a voice rising too, clear and strong. It was a song she heard her parents sing. Back straight, head high, heart and mouth open, she sang. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. And you know what? That song is a part of you. Sing when you score a victory. Sing when tough times get you down. Sing and think of all the people who sang before you, who carried on and pushed forward even when everything was against them. Sing and remember, they never stopped believing. Keep singing, keep pushing, keep passing it on. Keep on keeping on. The end. I hope you enjoyed our story and I hope you understand why this song has a powerful impact on our community and generations to come. Lift Every Voice and Sing has been the Black National Anthem since the early 1900s. So I want you to remember Lift every voice and sing. 
till earth and heaven rings. Sing your song that inspires generations and generations. Until next time from the nest. Bye. Shh.